Here are some quick questions to help you test your knowledge for Edexcel GCSE Biology Paper 1. If you haven't seen the full video going through everything you need to know for the paper yet, it's worth watching that first. Link is in the description. Here we go. And don't forget to check out the Science Shorts app to help you test your knowledge. Let's go. Why are electron microscopes better than normal light microscopes? They have higher resolving power or resolution, meaning they allow finer details to be visualized, like cell organelle subcellular structures. In standard form, what is 5 micrometers when converted to meters? It's 5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. That's because micro means times 10 to the minus 6, or a millionth. What three subcellular structures or organelles are only found in plant cells? They have chloroplasts, that's where photosynthesis takes place. They have a permanent vacuole, it's where water and sap and other things are stored. And a cell wall, which is rigid due to it being made from cellulose. What's the difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells? Eukaryotic cells, like your normal plant and animal cells, their DNA is found in the nucleus. For prokaryotic cells, like bacteria, even though they have DNA, it's not found in a nucleus. They don't have a nucleus at all. What are the stages of mitosis? The nucleus dissolves and the genetic material is duplicated. The two sets of chromosomes then move to opposite sides of the cell. The organelles are also duplicated. The cell then divides, producing two genetically identical diploid cells. How many chromosomes do diploid and haploid human cells have? Diploid means two sets of chromosomes, so humans, we have 23 pairs, or 46 in ours. Haploid cells just have one set, so that's just 23 chromosomes. These are your gametes, sperm and egg cells. What are the differences between diffusion, osmosis and active transport? Diffusion is the movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. We can say down the concentration gradient. This is passive. It doesn't require energy. Osmosis is the diffusion of water through a semi-permeable membrane to balance the concentration of solutions on either side. For example, sugar concentration in a cell. The water moves because the sugar is too large to fit through the holes in the membrane. The water always moves into the higher concentration solution in order to dilute it to balance it out. This is how water enters root hair cells in a plant. Active transport is the movement of molecules from a low concentration to a high concentration against the concentration gradient. This happens across a membrane via carrier proteins. This requires energy, hence the active part. This is how minerals get into root hair cells, which already have a higher concentration compared to the soil that they're in. How can you increase the rate of diffusion or osmosis? You can increase the temperature, that's because particles have more energy so they move faster. You can increase the difference in concentrations. You can also increase the surface area that diffusion is occurring across. In the osmosis practical, how do you find the concentration of sugar inside the potato, or whatever it is, from the graph? We interpolate using a line of best fit. Where it crosses the x-axis, that's a concentration at which no osmosis would occur, showing that this concentration is therefore the same as that inside the potato cells. Where is amylase made and what does it do? Amylase is an enzyme that's secreted by your salivary glands and pancreas. It breaks down starch into glucose. What are villi? Villi are the cells in the small intestine that absorb nutrients into the bloodstream. They are hair-like in order to have a large surface area to increase the rate of absorption. What are enzymes? Enzymes are biological catalysts. 
They facilitate crucial processes in your body, such as the breaking down of polymers into monomers, for example, starch into glucose. What does it mean when we say that enzymes are specific? This means they only break down certain molecules due to their lock and key nature. Only specific substrates, that's the molecule being broken down, will bind to the enzyme's active site in order to be broken down. What increases the rate of activity of an enzyme and what does it mean when it denatures? Increasing temperature increases the activity of the enzyme until the temperature gets so high that it denatures. The active site changes shape and it no longer works. They also have an optimum pH, too high or low pH, and the enzyme will denature. What are carbohydrases, proteases, and lipases break down and into what? Carbohydrases break down complex carbohydrates into simple sugars. Amylase is one of these. Proteases break down proteins into amino acids. Lipases break down lipids, that's fats, into glycerol and fatty acids. In the enzyme practical, how do you know that the amylase has broken down all of the starch? The solution will no longer turn black or change color when added to iodine in the spotting tile. What are the tests for starch, sugars, protein, and lipids? Iodine turns from orange to black in the presence of starch. Sugar turns Benedict's solution from blue to orange and maybe green in between. Protein turns Biruet's reagent from blue to purple. And lipids turn cold ethanol cloudy. Give one risk factor for each of these non-communicable diseases. Diabetes, coronary heart disease or just heart disease, liver disease and lung disease. Poor diet and obesity increase the risk of diabetes. Poor diet and lack of exercise for heart disease. And alcohol increases the risk of liver disease as the smoking for lung disease. What's the difference between a conscious response and a reflex? Use the names of the parts of the nervous system involved. A conscious response to a stimulus involves the signal going from the receptor, say skin for example, through a sensory neuron to relay neurons up the spinal cord to the brain. You make the decision to act and then a signal goes back via relay and motor neurons to an effector, say the muscles in your arm. A reflex arc is similar, but the difference being that the signal goes straight through the spinal cord to the motor neurons and effector, bypassing the brain. You act before you even realize what's happened. What do stimulants and depressants do, and how do they work? Also, give an example of both. A stimulant will decrease your reaction time or improve your reactions. It increases the rate at which neurotransmitter chemicals are released across the synapses between neurons. An example would be caffeine. A depressant does the opposite. It impairs your reactions. It reduces the amount of neurotransmitters crossing the synapse. An example is alcohol. What changes in your eye in order for it to focus on a distant object, and what is this called? This is accommodation. To focus on far objects, the ciliary muscles relax, the suspensory ligaments tighten, and these cause the lens to become thinner. So light refracts less, focusing it on the retina. So it refracts light less, focusing it on the retina. The opposite is of course true for when focusing on near objects. What are the stages of meiosis? Meiosis is how gametes are made. The chromosomes in a diploid cell are copied. Similar chromosomes pair up and genes are swapped between them. The cell then divides to produce two diploid cells. They then divide again to produce four genetically different haploid cells, your gametes. Describe the structure of DNA. It's a double helix polymer. You also need to know the bases or nucleotides. A and T always go together and C and G do too. These are all made from a sugar phosphate group. Every three bases code for an amino acid. The sequence of these determines what proteins are synthesized. What is an advantage for sexual and asexual reproduction?
the offspring of organisms that reproduce sexually can be better adapted to their environment. Asexual reproduction results in clones being made, of course, but the benefits of this, of course, is that only one organism is needed. Here's a Punnett square for parents carrying the recessive gene or allele that causes cystic fibrosis. What's the probability that their child will actually have the disease? In order to have the disease, the child has to have two little c alleles, two recessive alleles. He or she will not only carry the gene, but will have the disease. So that's a 25% probability. What do homozygous and heterozygous mean? These refer to the two alleles for a certain gene an organism has. So in our last example, the two parents had heterozygous alleles. They're different. Hetero means different. If the child had little c, little c, or big c, big c, these would both be homozygous instead. How do you clone an animal? You take the nucleus from a cell from the animal you want to clone and insert it into the egg cell of another, of the same species of course. You then insert the artificially fertilized egg into a surrogate mother and the clone will develop. What are the two types of white blood cells and how do they combat viruses? Lymphocytes produce antibodies of varying shapes. Once the right one is found, many copies are produced. These antibodies bind to the antigen on a virus's protein coat, stopping it from injecting its genetic material into cells so more copies won't be synthesized. The antibodies also cause the virus to clump together, making it easier for phagocytes to ingest and destroy them. How does a traditional vaccine work? A normal vaccine is an inert copy of a virus. When injected, it cannot cause more copies of itself to be made, but it means your lymphocytes will have already found the right antibody to produce by the time you encounter the real virus. You now have immunity. What is the difference between blind and double-blind trials when developing drugs? A blind trial involves a test group who are given the drug and a control group who are given a placebo. The test subjects don't know which group they're in, but the scientists or doctors carrying out the test do. For a double blind trial, not even the doctors know which is which. This eliminates any bias. That's why pharmaceutical companies are doing them less and less as time goes on, sadly. How are monoclonal antibodies made? Lymphocytes from mice are combined with tumor cells to make hybridoma cells, which multiply quickly, producing many copies of the antibody. Leave a like and a comment if this has helped you. All the best for your exam, and I'll see you next time.